7 criminals who might still be active today. Therefore, it comes as no surprise to everyone that there are numerous high-profile criminals in the globe that evaded capture by the law. Between January 1974 and June 1975, a killer known as the Doodler murdered five gay men in San Francisco in a string of identical killings. Even though police connected two other assaults on young gay males to the Doodler case, the killings finally ceased and the investigation became unproductive. Along with a $100,000 reward for information leading to the Doodler's arrest or capture, the police made a digitally aged composite sketch and audio of an anonymous phone call reporting the first body they suspected to be the Doodler public. While the FSB assassinated Ibn al-Khattab in 2002, Goki Yayev was able to elude capture by traveling into Georgia before perhaps making his way to Turkey. This serial killer, sometimes known as the Oakland County Child Killer, is charged with killing at least four kids in Oakland County, Michigan, between February 1976 and March 1977. With samples retrieved from some of the victims' bodies, the police were later able to develop a DNA profile of their primary offender, but they were never able to link this to anyone associated to the case as a suspect. Some people in Manchester, England believe that the canal pusher, a serial killer, has been stalking the city for some time. The Daily Star Sunday newspaper was informed by the Greater Manchester Police that between 2008 and 2014, they had recovered 85 bodies from Manchester's canals and waterways. Coroners noted 28 open instances where a cause of death couldn't be determined, even though the majority of these remains were linked to accidental deaths. The parents and families of people found in Manchester's rivers have frequently expressed suspicions about the fatalities of their loved ones. Despite this, little progress has been made in figuring out who the canal pusher is. This serial killer, who went by the moniker Phantom Freeway, terrorized the community without ever being apprehended. The police task group established to crack the case received countless calls and mail tips, but it was never able to pin down a single suspect as the murderer. Each of the remains of the five victims was discovered next to the I-295 highway, and Brenda Woodward, the fifth victim, was found draped in a coat with a terrible note written on it. Many of the case files and notes on the freeway phantom have vanished after the last murder. In other words, the case is still mostly unsolved and the families of the six victims suffer greatly from a lack of both comfort and justice. With the help of an accomplice, Stewart carried out an armed robbery in which he stabbed a guy 26 times with a butcher knife before putting his body in a truck and attempting to detonate it in the desert using homemade explosives. Later, locals discovered the body in the truck that had exploded, and Godwin was apprehended and charged with first-degree murder. Godwin afterwards traveled to Mexico, where he joined a drug cartel. This led to his eventual return to prison in 1991 although this time it was in Mexico. Godwin killed a member of a competing cartel in prison while still awaiting extradition to the US, delaying his extradition long enough to carry off a second escape. Today, it's thought that Godwin participates in illegal drug trading in Latin America. Without include the Zodiac Killer, I would have been unable to compile a list of offenders who might still be at large. The most well-known serial killer in history who was also the most likely to go unpunished. The Zodiac Killer terrorized the USA with his murderous rampage and impenetrable code ciphers that he employed to taunt both the press and the police. The Zodiac Killer, who preyed on well-known lovers' lanes in the San Francisco Bay Area, frequently used a gun or a knife to slay his victims. Through a series of coded letters sent anonymously to the media and police, Zodiac would boast about his murderous prowess to the press and make fun of the police's failure to apprehend him. He acquired the moniker The Zodiac Killer thanks to these letters. The Zodiac Killer continued to send letters to the media even after he ceased killing people during the 1970s, pausing for a while before sending his final letter in 1978. The Zodiac Killer was never apprehended despite numerous crack teams analyzing the coded messages and attempting to solve the case, as well as survivors and witnesses to his attacks providing police with descriptions that matched and helped create an accurate suspect sketch. It's not difficult to decide not to leave the house after reading something like the above. Remember, though, that despite how frightening the world is, you are still much more likely to be a drunk driver than a criminal on the loose. 
In his own time, he enjoys reading and practicing circus skills, 